Think of Mary Poppins and you immediately hear the classic songs from the film. In addition to providing some of the most recognizable tunes in history, the music of Mary Poppins also helps us tell the story. So let's have a listen and find out how. The numbers in the movie are very, very brief. And so it was realized that the songs would need to be expanded, it, even the, the songs that exist already, and that original songs would need to be written to further the plot, like Practically Perfect like anything can happen, and like Brimster and Treacle. So George Stiles and Anthony Drew, with then the blessing of the Sherman brothers, took the original material and readapted it and expanded it in order to service the story as the story became. One of our jobs was to make songs like Supercalifragilistic and make um, Step in Time have a sli slightly more meaning to the characters involved on stage, rather than it being an excuse for a big song and dance number. And Supercal is, a, is an example, because I think in the film it's it's like one minute, 58 seconds or something, and in the stage show, it's about six minutes. Well, it had, you can't excuse that unless you're advancing the story and teaching the children another lesson. But it's not just writing new songs and expanding existing ones that makes the music of Mary Poppins. There's also a whole range of new musical arrangements and orchestrations that help drive the story forward. All of the score, the entirety of Mary Poppins, and there's, I don't know, 4,000 bars or something, got rearranged by me, in other words, exactly how the piano plays the notes of the tune and the accompaniment is filtered through my brain to try, I suppose, and give a kind of sense to everything. The arrangement says, we're going to play it this fast, we're going to cut to this melody, come back to this melody, change it around. But an orchestration is what member of the orchestra is playing what piece of the song. In the orchestrator, in our case, Bill Braun, has decided very carefully which instruments play what and how is that going to sound. That's why when, we, when you're doing a show like this, which, was, which is an emotional story, it's a proper, proper musical drama, um, Mary Poppins, you need someone who's extremely skillful in making the choice of instrumentation as important as the choice of the words in the script. It was an interesting case in point with our song Practically Perfect, which Mary introduced herself with. Bill had scored it for woodwinds, so it was quite chirpy and lovely, and you heard I'm practically perfect, and you had pop, pop, pee, pee, pop, 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 and it was light and delicate, and Cameron said that is absolutely not who Mary Poppins is. She comes in, she's brisk, she's no nonsense, and so we threw all of that out, and it became pecking little muted trumpets that literally go in other words, metaphorically, wagging their finger. Practically perfect in every way. Whilst what she's singing is very jolly and it has a nice bounce to it, underneath it there's this rod of steel saying, now come on, you're going to do as I tell you. You have to make the audience believe that Mary comes from another world. And I said, I, I really feel that we will make these songs sound old fashioned if we have a, a traditional string section. I think because, you know, with things like Jolly Holiday, we came up, for example, instead of It's a jolly holiday with you, but gentlemen like you are few. With the nice um, ba -ba -dum. We, we came up with something that was more jaunty, with a, with a, a rhythm that was Let's go for a jaunty saunter, you are bound to make your mark Me looks like all of us were born to take a promenade in the park But that, that accompaniment was very different in feel and Bill said, you know what? The piano lies at the core of this whole way you've th thought about the score. And so that really helped us. Um, and we just said, OK, if that's the foundation of the orchestra, we've got to have lots of brass. And so we decided that we wouldn't stint on that at all. Two horns, two trumpets, two trombones. And they all play lots of what you might call British brass instruments. We want the music to sound like you're hearing it played as it is in a theatre. To connect to the sound of theatre music and not try to simply reproduce the big, beautiful, booming film sound, but a young, lively, vibrant pit band, and that's what we do. Every version of it has had this 16-piece, and even when we made the album, we didn't add a single person, because it gives the show a very, very special, different sound, uh, which is timeless and classic. Yeah. 